Hey guys, what is up and welcome to another FIFA 17 experiment. In this experiment, we are asking the question, could a team of Chelsea's very best loanies win the Premier League? And since Brighton and Hove and Albion have already been promoted to the Premier League, I thought they would be the perfect club to use for this experiment. So to do this, I removed Sunderland, who have already been relegated and they have no mathematical chance of staying up. That's why I chose the two teams. So in this experiment, like I said before, we're taking the best Chelsea loanies and some of those players will be including those who have returned to the club. So take, for example, uh, Charlie Masonda, Kennedy, or Nathan Ake would be the prime examples of this. This is one of them that I'm very curious about. I'm gonna say I think there's an off chance they could uh, compete for the Champions League positions, but I don't think they're gonna be able to win the uh, Premier League. I think, yeah, I think they'll be able to win the, uh, basically, make it into the Champions League positions, and they have a half decent chance of maybe winning the league because with growth of players you could see very good things happening So, starting off we got Tommy Abraham who's having an absolute beauty of a season with Bristol City have scored 20 plus goals for them and is likely gonna keep uh, Bristol City in the championship very good stats and he's still quite young Jeremy Boga is playing for Granada in uh, La Liga he's had a solid enough season but playing in a Spanish mid-table team isn't too easy, but he's made good progress. Kennedy uh, didn't really get much time at Watford. There's reported lack of dedication in training, but I'm not sure what to say there. He's still 20, can play multiple positions, and still, I'd say, is a candidate for another loan next season. Matt Miazga is currently at Vitesse, and I see him there for another year or so, as he slowly starts to improve himself he has decent potential but I don't think he's the center back of the future for Chelsea as he just does not look that amazing then we got is Isaiah Brown or Izzy Brown from Huddersfield Town and they are um, in the mid table right now in the championship so he has had a solid enough season three stars three star and however is a bit injury prone then we got Tomas Kalas from Fulham, someone who looks like he's going to be going on a permanent deal to them at the moment. But he is a good center back, has solid potential in FIFA, and is always someone very good for a Road to Glory style crew mode. Then we got Nathan Ake, who has jumped back into the Chelsea team with style recently, obviously making one of his most key starts against Tottenham in the FA Cup semi final. But he's a very good center back, could really step in pretty easily for pretty much all mid-table Premier League teams and hopefully he'll get a run out with Chelsea uh, and he is very versatile which is gonna run in his favor so long term Chelsea center back to the future never know then we got Bertrand Traore from Ajax so one that most people will probably forget about but he's he's been having a half decent season with uh, Ajax but obviously as you can see he can't shoot with his left with his right foot, which is kind of problematic, but still has four-star skills, has good potential, has a definite long-term future with Chelsea, and very curious to see what he can do in the upcoming years. Then we got Charlie Masonda, who pretty much was the best prospect at Chelsea. Had a bit of a rough time on his loan, but because he had only one goal in 24 games, and in addition, got injured partway through the season, so he just came back to Chelsea. But I'd say he could be the right winger that we're looking for in the future if we give him a chance. Five star, five star in terms of skill moves and weak foot. Looks like a very good player. And then the two, uh, then probably the two best performing ones in terms of younger loanees, Lewis Baker, who's playing at Vitesse, five star weak foot, which is quite impressive. He's a very good long-term prospect. Hopefully he gets the chance at Chelsea. Then of course the main in turn one in terms of performance, Andreas Christensen, who has been nothing but an absolute beast 
in the Bundesliga with Mundrin Gladbach. He's already considered one of the best defenders up there with the likes of Mats Hummels, which is some pretty heady company. But a very good player. Uh, flexibility, he can play in center back or central defense mid, so maybe an odd shout. Maybe he replaces Matic in the future, but definitely not right now in the form he's in. Then the two older ones, we've got Loic Remy, who unfortunately had his season ended with an injury. Injury, and has not played in a while. And he does have four star skill moves, but he is 29 years old and still at 79, so he won't decrease in rating. Then, probably the best Chelsea Loney in terms of pure skill right now, uh, Juan Cadrado. It's kind of hard to consider him a Loney because he's practically Juventus' player, but on technicality, he can get into this experiment. And he's going to be a key player. He's very fast, very skilled, good passer, has deep, pretty good shooting. And uh, five star skillers are always fun to play with, even if I'm not going to use that in this experiment. But, yep, he's a very good player, probably the most developed of the lot. So, this is the full team that we're going to be playing. So, it's Bertrand Traore and Loic Remy up top. You got Musanda, Luis Baker, Nathan Ake in a central midfield role. Juan Cuadrado as right midfielder. Then we got Kennedy at left back. Kalash in left center back. Andreas Christensen in right center back. And then Pocanioli is going to play right back. And Stockdale will be the keeper for our team. So worst comes to worst. Maybe I consider getting a keeper. But right now I'm not going to worry about that. Taking a look at the first player. Uh, Sergio Rico has had a pretty solid season, I'd have to say, despite not having the absolute perfect stats. He did indeed play a very key role in terms of the team succeeding over the course of the season. Juan Cuadrado was absolutely brilliant during the season. He scored 15 goals in the Premier League alongside three assists a brilliant season for someone who is pretty much playing as a right mid with a ton of defensive responsibility Andreas Christensen played in 23 Premier League games and had a very inter very respectable clean sheet record the one thing about defense has that it's been a little bit disappointing overall as in all honesty we've conceded way too many goals but at the same time not perfect but it's it's okay Kennedy didn't play that many games but at least got an assist Knockhart got four goals in total all season which is not very good Nathan Ake ha played a key role on the team in the CDM position and I think it served us pretty well so happy with that Luz Baker I'm quite disappointed with the AI here Really would have liked to see him play more. Jeez, this seems like Jose Mourinho is controlling Chelsea again. So Charlie Musanda ended up having a pretty solid season in the end. So he got two more goals over the season. So pretty respectable stats for first season in the Premier League. And Musanda looks like he has a great future in the game. Look, Remy is currently 79 overall. He had six goals in the Premier League. Six goals in total point from him. Bertrand Traore got more game time and finished with 8 goals in 16 games, so he deserves way more in terms of starts. Tommy Abraham, 5 goals and 3 assists in 30 Premier League games. I'm happy with that. Jeremy Boga played one game. You can't say anything about him. Matt Miazga three, played, three, played 3 Premier League games. Did nothing, pretty much. So, Sebastian Pocanioli played pretty well in the Premier League, but in the FA Cup wasn't very good. Somehow Liam Rosenier played, and Bruno Salter got into 19 games? He's a player for the history books? Are they nuts? Um, yeah, so regardless, a pretty good season. I don't like the some of the weaker players playing so many games, but it's not the end of the world in all honesty.
So taking a look at our league position now, we finished sixth in the league, which is, I'd have to say, quite the achievement for this team. So scored 49 goals and conceded 45. So I would dare say if they had managed to concede, let's say, only 35 or something like that, I think they could have definitely finished in the top four, but in terms of conceding goals, that was probably the Achilles heel for this team. So in terms of title winners, Arsenal was at the top. Only one win above Chelsea, and they did indeed have weaker goal difference. So rounding out the top four though, Manchester City with 68 points, Liverpool with 67. In terms of clubs you wouldn't think finishing as far as they did. So Spurs only finished 7th, Man U in 8th, and Leicester surprisingly enough, not in real life, but here I'd have to say it's quite surprising that they didn't finish in 14th place at least. So taking a look at the FA Cup run, we didn't have an FA Cup run, we didn't even make it to the round 16, which is kind of embarrassing. However, in the EFL Cup, we made it to the final only to lose to Stoke on penalties. Penalties are my Achilles heel in this game. I'm quite disappointed there. To beat Chelsea and then Tottenham and lose to Stoke, that's kind of insulting. Yeah, overall, I'd have to say it's a pretty incredible season because being able to even get close to the Europa League or Champions League is quite solid. Either way though, that is going to be the end experiment. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was definitely a different experiment and the next one I want to the best of all time Lone XI. So for example, think of someone like Harry who's a very good striker right now for Tottenham and how he was on multiple loans to places including Leicester City. I was thinking what would be some really good players who you wouldn't have thought it went on loan, but did. Either way, this is going to be the end of the experiment. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you guys like these sort of experiments, then feel free to subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Peace!